This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fat Lord. And it blew my little mind. Oh, how that, could it not? I mean, there's what we a- need. <laughs> Anti-social media. Right. <laughs> Be your own secret Santa with alcohol and Ambien. <laughs> yeah. Evil. <laughs> Evil. As in the fruits of the devil. <laughs> ruh, 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 ruh. Hey! IFAF. Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. I'm still thinking about the pronunciation of Halloween. Really? That's still on your mind? Do, do you say hollow or Halloween? I think I say Halloween. Okay, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Don. Forget that <laughs> stuck in my head. Jalapeno. Although I, I do Jalapeno? say... Jalapeno? All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve. Not All Hallows Eve. Yeah. And, and if you're talking about halls... You yeah. say, hallowed halls. That's true. Lord's Prayer is, hallowed be thy name. Hmm. But it's Halloween. Uh, Don H-A- might be right. Well, H-A-L-L is hall. That's true. I, okay. But now that that's over, oh, we did want to show you our costumes from the party we went to. Of we course, look so good. <laughs> Carl nailed Batgirl. And I nailed Fat Man. <laughs> no, I I nailed here's here's what I nailed. I nailed what looks like the penguin masquerading <laughs> as the Joker. You're too mean to yourself. <laughs> I thought you looked great. <laughs> it was a fun time though. We had a right. we had a fun time at the party, except for this cold that I picked up. Yeah, you poor thing. I was sort of I was out of commission for a couple of days this week. Yeah, you were totally Yeah. You yeah, you were gone. <laughs> I had the man flu. <laughs> Uh, I did feel a little bad for you, but only a little. I missed out on your <laughs> pumpkin soup. Yeah, you missed out on actual Halloween. And this is the third year. Yes. Yeah, that we've had pumpkin soup together. Uh-huh, that's but, true. But Carly's the best because then she brought me some. Of course. Well, to be fair, you picked up all the ingredients, so it'd be kind of a dick move if I didn't. That, well, that's <laughs> I had the strength to go to Winco and do that. Yeah. But when it came time to actually come over and make it, I was like, I'm spent. <laughs> I'm yeah. spent. That's all the energy I have for today. Well, and I feel so bad because I feel like I totally miscommunicated because I thought you were still planning to come over. I didn't understand that your text was that, saying that you weren't coming. No, that was my miscommunication. Well, I, yeah. Because I, and I wasn't being honest with myself. I was like, I can do this. I can do this i right I, when it's time i'll find some of the strength and find it and then when it came time i'm like sorry i get it yeah. well and i said to you like um hey can you come over just before six or maybe i'll come get the ingredients and i think that you read just the last part and you were expecting me to come over and i was expecting you to come over and then i had to contact you and be like hey why aren't you here buddy <laughs> it happens to the best communicators <laughs> i think so yeah it does uh, you know not, what we ended not, up not watching? Not that we're the best communicators, but... I think we are. What'd you watch? <laughs> uh, we ended up watching Little Shop of Horrors, followed... Great oh classic. Suddenly Seymour. Well, and our very good friend Jesse had never seen it before. What? Yeah. Dude. Oh, it was great. And I actually ended up showing them the alternative ending, too. <laughs> oh, that blew my mind when I saw that. Right. Me, if, too. If you've only seen... Seymour and Audrey run off to somewhere that's green. If you've mm. only seen that ending, there's a whole new world. <laughs> you got to see if you ever check out the director's cut. I think it's on Prime, but I'm not sure. It's also on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we watched that and then we watched Interview with the Vampire. Yes. Yeah. Which, which I had never seen the movie before, but I had read the book. And isn't it so weird to see, is it Kirsten Dunst or Kristen Dunst? Kirsten. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. As a kid? So as a weird, kid dude. vampire? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah. In 10 years, she's going to be kissing Spider-Man. <laughs> While you were watching that, I was watching Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I've heard that's so funny. It's pretty funny. And I don't, like, it... I didn't read anything about it. I've uh-huh. seen a couple of clips. The I've seen the meme, we've had a doozy of a day. I've never seen that. And... Uh, I, I gotta tell you, it's a doozy of a day. It's it's hilarious if you don't know what's gonna happen, which is why I'm not gonna tell you anything about it and don't watch the trailer either. I never watch trailers for yeah. movies anymore because they ruin the movie. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Like, I know I mentioned on this podcast how I refused to watch the Barbie trailer. Yeah. 
I was so mad when I saw like 10 seconds of it once. You had it was, to walk out of Dial of Destiny. Yes, to, I did. To make sure you didn't see anything. Because I was not going to let that happen. <laughs> I was so excited about Barbie and I'm so glad that I stuck to my guns on that because it was so fun if you didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And, and they even gave away some of the cameos in the trailer. It's like, oh, come on, guys. Right. The, I mean, now we can spoil it. Will Ferrell and Michael Sarah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and I saw Michael Sarah in a meme before uh, the movie came out. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay. Like, I, w- I was kind of expecting that, but I'm glad that I didn't see any of, the, any of the other stuff. I remember I saw, like, a snippet of the commercial before I had a chance to see the movie, and I was so mad for, like, <laughs> two weeks about it. I just stewed. It's, but with everything <laughs> being on every platform now, right? it's hard to miss something. Like, it's, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully it's hard to miss us. <laughs> um, because I mean, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, just got an X account, started mm-hmm. uploading there, TikTok. Mm-hmm. Am I forgetting one? Spotify? Uh, Apple yeah, Podcasts? Well, yeah, and we're on all the audio platforms. Yeah. You can find us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, you but, know what we should be on? Tumblr. Okay. <laughs> That's a blast from the past. Oh, yeah. That's a name I've not heard in a long time. <laughs> I still use Tumblr. Really? On my original account, too. So I'm sure it's got some cringe stuff if you scroll part enough. That you set up as a 13-year-old edgelord? Yeah. Edge yeah, lady. actually. I think, that's his, <laughs> yeah, I think that's about how old I was. Uh, it was my cousin who finally convinced me to get one because she, of course, had one already. You know, I've always been kind of anti-social media. Mm-hmm. Like, it took so long for me There's to finally get There's what we a- <laughs> need. Anti-social media. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, but it took me so long to get a Facebook. Uh, and then once I finally did, now I'm on Facebook all the time. Uh, but finally I also got a Tumblr and I love Tumblr so much. It's such a good platform. Yeah. Yeah. I love the shit posting that happens. (laughs) Like people, people just say the most outrageous stuff on Tumblr and it's always hilarious. (laughs) I, I have seen, okay. I have seen Tumblr screenshots that are hilarious. Right. On like Imager. Yes. <laughs> the same place where I've seen 4chan screenshots that are hilarious. Right. The green texts. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. That are just always so out of left feet, out in left so field. So weird. You know, have you heard of the Eldritch Furby? Yes. Yeah. You Only because you told me about <laughs> that, I think on one of our first shows. I think so. One of the lost ones. But yeah, that came on, that came to fruition on Tumblr. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to talk about the elephant on your wall now? Yes, I think we should. The, Give me a second to remember there was something behind me. There, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and can I man- can I mention how well it matches? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, because what? So there was a slight disagreement as to when the Christmas season would start here at IFAF, and <laughs> I got the tree just in case. Mm-hmm. And then late last week, the city of Idaho Falls on Friday put up lights on the big Christmas tree by mm-hmm. the water tower in the Japanese friendship garden. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I think most people call it a pine tree. That's a sign. Yes. <laughs> I would call it a Christmas tree, especially now. <laughs> That's fair. That's and, fair. In fact, here, while we're talking about it, here's a shot of the guys, the bros. Mm-hmm. There were three of them. Brissafines. One on the ground, two in the cherry picker. Mm-hmm. Just putting up the lights. Yeah. Big star on top already. They're, they've they're started decorating the Japanese Friendship Garden as well. So I felt it was appropriate to begin the Christmas season since we ended with a, I wouldn't say an argument, but a spirited debate <laughs> last week. I thought it'd be apropos to have the Christmas tree up. But I did want to make a compromise. So we got some fall leaf <laughs> inserts. Yeah. And stuck them in there. <laughs> Which I think is nice. And it does. It matches your orange and yellow fall dress just perfectly. Yeah. So um, I got an email notification today, and <laughs> it was saying that my package had been delivered from Unique Vintage. And um, I didn't remember ordering a package from Unique Vintage. <laughs> ah. And so I opened the email because I was like, what? I thought it was a scam or something. Uh, and then I saw the order, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> You know, like I remember looking at my account and being like, "Man, where have my where's all my money gone?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll like go through the um, the purchases because I'm like, "Okay, clearly, like someone got to my card or like spent right. some money." Because I did have that happen once. I think I know where this is going. But no, it's all me. <laughs> you, you've seen the meme. Uh, be your own secret Santa with alcohol and Ambien. <laughs> yeah. 
that. I actually, I knew a guy and I don't think he drank, but uh, he actually bought tickets to a show. He lives here in Idaho Falls. He bought tickets to a show in Denver. Oh, no. No airfare, no hotel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but he, he bought concert tickets to a show, you know. Did he go? I think he ended up, yeah, also. <laughs> he made it happen. <laughs> hey, you know what? Honestly, sometimes your subconscious self does things that your conscious self does really appreciate. He'd wake up some mornings with like 500 new songs <laughs> in iTunes. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Man, and they were expensive, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh. That's like. I mean, I, I think it, I think he probably bought albums, but. Still. Still. still I mean, like. 500 songs, that's at least, okay, let's see here. There's 20 songs an album on average. Yeah, maybe ten, 15. 10 to 20, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's like 50 albums, and they're each like 20 bucks each. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> now, you remember when we went to the vet uh, for Rango's Broken Wiener. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, they had a Christmas tree up already, but it was decorated yes. like Halloween. And I know... I, so it's always a friend of a friend. I know I have a friend of a friend who ha- leaves the Christmas tree up year round and decorates it seasonally. Really? Yeah. I have heard of Halloween trees. Yeah. Like a lot of people will do black pine tree or well, yeah, black Christmas trees as Halloween trees. Um, I've never heard of someone leaving a leaving it up all year and changing it every yeah. season. That seems excessive. I, I think <laughs> when you get older, time flies faster. Well, yeah, because it's proportionally a smaller percentage of your life. Exactly. So if you don't get around to putting it away until April, (laughs) then you think, oh, another six months, it's going back up anyway. Which is so funny to think of, too, because realistically, it's so much less work to just put it away instead of changing the decorations on it every season. Right. Like, it takes so little time to take the decorations off and put it in. Like, once you have the decorations off, putting it in the box is like, what, six seconds? Have you seen the TikTok tree this year? And it's, I don't know, it's it's one of those spendy ones from Home Depot. And I'm I'm waiting for the technology to get a little more affordable because I'm not spending a thousand bucks on a tree. No. But I want one of those ones with the... um, Oh, the remotes? The lights controlled by the an app. Oh, uh-huh. And you can, you know, make it spin around with rainbow colors mm-hmm. and all sorts of crazy stuff. And and now they've got special uh, flashing LEDs that kind of look like soft but quick fairy lights. Oh, like fun. Like lightning bugs. Oh, if you've been, oh, If you've cute. ever been east of Kansas, you know. Mm-hmm. And, or I, I hear we sometimes have lightning bugs in Idaho, like around Lava Hot Springs area. Really? I would love to see that. Uh, that's super cool. Yeah. I haven't seen lightning bugs since I was like seven, and I visited my aunt in Connecticut. Okay, and I would love to see them again. That sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. I again lived in Milwaukee for three years, mm-hmm. and that was just one of my highlights. Just yeah. walking out the front door and seeing because we are right now. They have a lot of weird kind of protected small little misshapen segments of land that are protected waterlands or protected marshlands. Oh. And and so yeah, and with that humidity there, uh-huh. The the lightning bugs just love it. But That's cool. I guess we don't get too many of them west of Kansas just no, and I think really. it's a humidity and at least in our case a warmth thing. Nowadays though, if I did see any I, there's no way I wouldn't think of that song by Owl City Fireflies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. It's a good one. And then, do you know that guy went like gospel after that? You know, that doesn't surprise me too much. I know he was like a, he was kind of a Christian band to begin with. Okay. I, and I didn't know that. I just liked his pop stuff. And then I yeah. heard, um, so when I, I wore a lot of hats at my last gig right. on the radio. And, you know, not only would I program music for the hard rock stage, I, one minute I'd be programming Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> and then the next moment was uh, a thing the Mormon called Tag- Tabernacle Sounds Choir. of Sunday, yeah, <laughs> yeah. with Motab. And uh, <laughs> Owl City does this great version of In Christ Alone. And I know I'm going to sound like a good little uh, Christian choir boy here when I say <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, those hymns, man, they, they still get me. I get that. You still get me. <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, I loved the band Reliant K. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Now, th- I believe they're a Christian band. They are. M- back in my day, it was Striper. Oh. They were a Christian rock band, <laughs> and they were like black and yellow, so they looked like wasps. I don't know. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was I, I really loved their one song, uh, Marilyn Manson. Oh yeah, yeah. And what was of, the message of that song? Um, well, the chorus went something along the lines of Marilyn Manson ate my girlfriend. He consumed her, and now she believes in sin. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's probably wrong. <laughs> so when someone Google fact checks me, I'm gonna look dumb. But it was something like that, and I was like. <laughs> I was so into it. I was like, yeah, Marilyn Manson's a bad dude. And yeah. now I'm like, mm, he is, but for different reasons. <laughs> I've been programmed to believe since my before my prefrontal cortex was formed. And no, I, Did I say that out loud? I thought I just thought that. We've fallen back to some people hate, hate it when it gets dark at 4.30. Um, yeah. Or like five around here. So I'm Ida, one of them. <laughs> Idaho Falls, I actually, you know, growing up here, um, I didn't quite appreciate the fact that Idaho Falls is almost exactly in the middle of the mountain time zone. Uh-huh. But as you can imagine, since there are three, four, let's see, Pacific, Mountain, Central, Eastern. Okay. Since there are four time zones in the continental United States, mm-hmm. there are plenty of people who live on, say, the east end of a time zone. Yeah. Which is like... So if you think about it, if we're in the middle of a time zone, we enjoy about the middle of the one hour period difference mm-hmm. between, say, Central and Pacific. So if you live on the east end of a time zone- The sun's actually in the middle at noon. You're right. Yeah. But if you live on the east end of a time zone, you get, I mean, like New York or, mm-hmm. say, Milwaukee, it gets dark at like 4.30. Oh, that's so early. That's and the sun so also depressing. comes up in the summer like at 4.30. <sighs> So th- there's one thing. If you've been like, give me a reason to appreciate Idaho Falls, Idaho. There's one. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we don't experience any of the extremes, mm-hmm. say, on the east end or a west end of a yeah. time zone. <laughs> That's nice. Although, okay, can we talk about how dumb daylight savings yes. is? I hate daylight savings. Yes. I hate it so much. Except obliterate it. Except when we fall back. Then I love it. Right. <laughs> I actually, I knew a guy who- I just want to do that until we're nocturnal. <laughs> right. You just want to keep falling back. Yeah. Yeah. I knew a guy who was just so bitter and angry, literally, mm-hmm. um, in during daylight saving time because he felt like something had been taken away from him. He said he was groggy all summer long mm. and couldn't wait to fall back. And he felt like he regained that thing that was taken from him. And I thought- Man, what a what a thing that's so out of your control to be right. so upset about for such a what a majority of the year, right? Yeah, I yeah. Think. Well, half the year. Yeah, half the yeah. year. So damn near a majority. <laughs> right. It's probably like fifty one percent. But I still have an attitude about it, and it's been scientifically proven that a we don't need it anymore, and b mm-hmm. it really does mess with you. Yeah, your circadian yeah, more- rhythm and all the. Well, I was going to say that guy must have like the most finely tuned circadian rhythm to ever exist. Yes. Maybe he's just a sensitive soul. I guess he's so. Really in tune. Yeah. Which is sort of a funny concept too, you know, because like it's so weird to think about your body knowing the time when you don't like actually know the time. Right. You know, uh, it's sort of like um, how they say that there are actually six senses because there's taste, touch, sight, scent, smell, and also movement. Your We're, body can feel when you're being moved. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like when you're on a plane or a bus. Exactly. Even if technically you don't like feel it, feel it, like your body can tell that you're moving. Yeah. You know, and I guess in like in that same uh, vein, there's also time. You know, people tend to have a sense of time, not me, but other people. <laughs> I and, and maybe just because my life was run by the clock for so many years, mm-hmm. I can I can wake up from say, let's let's say I had a nap after lunch, a little siesta. Mm-hmm. I I can without having looked at the clock beforehand, I can wake up and go, it's about three thirty. Look at my clock, and and I'll be within ten minutes either way. Yeah, I'm not like that at all. I have so I have such bad time blindness, and it's why I'm always late to everything. Right. And it's got to drive people nuts. And it's I Carly get standard it. time. <laughs> it is well. It's because I never know what time it is. Like I can kind of guess sometimes if I have something to reference. Like if I looked at the clock about an hour ago, I can usually estimate it's about an hour after. 
you know? But realistically, if I woke up from a nap and I didn't immediately see the time, no idea. Yeah. Yeah. You got those freak out moments where like, okay, I remember when I was a kid Mm -hmm. uh, and I say kid, but like teenager in high school, I would, you know, say take a nap after school or or whatever uh, extracurricular activity I had that day, Mm -hmm. you know, crash for a little bit and then, you know, wake up around dinner time. Yeah. Uh, mm. But but look at the clock and go, 6 a.m.? Right. Have you ever felt that? Oh, yeah. Where you're like 12 hours ahead of yourself? Yes. Yeah, I've totally had <laughs> That's that. That's the I, worst. I remember that happened to me once when I was really sick. Like, I had the flu and was puking all day yeah. sick. Uh, and I woke up at like 3 a.m. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I slept till 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I'm a party animal. <laughs> I'm an animal in bed. <laughs> Uh, if by animal you mean sloth yes (laughs) yeah pet me and bring me treats yes (laughs) oh like my bed bums (laughs) right yeah my my cats lately so i finally here's how you know that winter is really approaching i finally put my electric blanket on my bed oh yeah and my cats have not left it since I bet they're loving it. <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah, they get up to pee and poop and eat, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and you put your electric blanket on like a fitted sheet, so yeah. it's underneath uh, you. Yeah, so I do yeah. electric blanket, fitted sheet, top sheet, comforter, spare blankets. What What must they think as animals? Like, <laughs> what's this magical place? They just yeah, and they just they're uh, like, I don't see the sunbeams, but I feel the sunbeams. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they probably don't think it through that far. Yeah, they're probably just happy just it's like, there. Oh yeah, the warm thing is back now. <laughs> yeah. One comment and a couple of follow ups. Uh, Gerald on YouTube says, "Hey, Bucky's has total privacy stalls at their stores, and they play music." Perfect bathroom scenario. Go Bucky's. <laughs> yeah, Bucky's is, a, if you don't know, it's a chain of uh, gas station convenience stores, mostly in Texas. Mm-hmm. I think they go as far east as Florida and maybe a couple in Georgia, but they're notorious for amazing stores. Like, I think they have the world's largest car wash or longest car wash. That's so cool. Or something like that. And their mascot is a beaver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's it's a guy. He's got a little red hat, I think. Will we ever get one here? I don't know. Oh, I wish. I'd love a Bucky's. And a couple of follow-ups. Uh, oh, Kevin, my buddy in Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. The one that I refer to as the most interesting man in the world. Because he is. Because he is. <laughs> he sent me a picture of him wearing the Christmas sweater that you described in a previous episode. I love that. Here it is. It's, <laughs> it's the one about um, Merry oh. Christmas to everybody except that bitch, Carol Beck. <laughs> I wonder how Carol's doing. It's, a, it's the Joe Exotic <laughs> ugly Christmas sweater. Thank you, Kevin. And, you know, I, it's funny. I refer to him as the most interesting man in the world. Mm-hmm. And I've referred to you as the most interesting woman in the world. So, really, he and I should have a podcast. I was going to say, or <laughs> or maybe you're the same person because I've never seen you in the same place at the same time. <laughs> there we go. I like that even better. <laughs> Kevin is, and it's too bad they didn't get here in time, but Kevin has sent, since we were talking about Japanese candy at World Market. Oh, I love Japanese candy. He has sent a bunch of Kit Kats to <gasps> us. Oh my God, I love Kevin so much. So next episode, we'll be talking about Kevin again (laughs) and having some Kit Kats. I feel like we need to at one point go, Kevin! Because you know, know, doing the home alone. Uh, Japan has weird Kit Kats, if you haven't heard that by now. So can't wait to try those out. such a fun concept. It's kind of like... You know, we have weird soda pop flavors like uh, Mountain Dew. Yeah. We have the weirdest Mountain Dews, if you think about it. That Fanta we tried on the last, yeah. e- last episode. Yeah. And of course, we are, we've talked about this before. We are home to one of the world's wildest sodas, Iron Port. Mm-hmm. It's only right here in the, I think, parts of Wyoming, Idaho, and a couple of places in Utah. Mm-hmm. Well, and aren't there, isn't there somewhere in Oregon? Maybe. That sounds right to me. I know that you can go get a whole bag of the syrup from a distributor in Logan. That's true. Yeah. Just, just a few hours south of us. Oh, and I think two people mentioned that, yes, Mike, there is a Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> I guess it's like a Halloween slasher movie for real, but yeah. Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, I think, you know, since our phones are all listening to us, I think I saw the ad for it even. Funny. Because I will watch trailers. 
Uh, Which I don't get. And you know, I'm pretty sure there's a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving movie. Oh, the yeah. name currently eludes me, but I'm pretty sure it exists. But nothing that would preclude you from saying having a Christmas tree up yet, you know? I suppose. Right. You know, and I will say Bob's Burgers always has the best Thanksgiving episodes. I love the the care that they give to Thanksgiving. And the Halloween episodes are fantastic. They are. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I posted a meme earlier this week, a <laughs> screenshot from when Linda's putting up a Christmas tree and there's still Halloween <laughs> decorations up. And Bob says, it's the day after Christmas, Lynn. <laughs> and she said something like, I'll put some mistletoe on my butt and you can kiss it. <laughs> I love Linda. She's great. All right. All right. God. <laughs> <laughs> that whole wonderful dysfunctional family. <laughs> One more quick follow up uh, from a couple podcasts ago when I was talking to Austin Allen at Mountain Macabre. Mm-hmm. He does the uh, handmade horrors for Halloween, tombstones, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So cool. Skeletons. And I'm like, okay, remind me how we met exactly. Because I know we did meet mm-hmm. in person, but, and he reminded me that it was at a function for the other. IFAF in town. Oh, yeah. The Idaho Falls Advertising Federation. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, they have the poor taste to see fit to have me host the GEM Awards, (laughs) the Advertising Federation Awards. I don't know. They forget about it every two or three years, and then they invite (laughs) me back. Well, and you went this year with me. I did. It I was Barbie themed, mm-hmm, which I was so excited for, and we looked so good. Yeah, <laughs> but but I just wanted. It's so funny, and 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 you know, slight apologies, Idaho Falls Advertising Federation for stealing your acronym, but it <laughs> sort of couldn't be helped. Yeah, if you get my meaning, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Idaho Falls and Friends. Clearly, yes, that's clearly what our if your grandma asks, Joe stands for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I told my grandma what it actually means, and she was so... <laughs> uh, he, she wasn't surprised, is the thing, because she knows me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she was like, of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> it could mean so many things. Disappointed. That's the word I'm looking for. She was so disappointed in me. <laughs> and that hurts more. <laughs> Son, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now that we've talked about Halloween and Thanksgiving, I guess it's time to talk about Christmas, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I actually let you talk me in to starting to celebrate Christmas before Thanksgiving. On November 1st, no less. <laughs> right. <laughs> we went and saw Straight No Chaser at the Colonial Theater. <laughs> it's the day after Halloween, Lynn. <laughs> Yeah, they're awesome. They're they're one of my favorite new Christmas artists. They were so fun. I mean, Michael Bublé, sure. Mariah sure. Carey, sure. Yeah. These guys are fun. They're so fun. I walked into it like, okay, here's the thing I'm doing for Mikey. But I ended it like, all right, there are some, there are some pretty solid fellas. Yeah. I mean, I genuinely got pretty hype. One of my favorite, the first half of the show was just... Um, acapella dude singing and then the second half of the show was acapella dude singing christmas music which was fun i thought it was just perfect for november 1st yeah and we were so close to the stage too we were only like three rows back we were right there it's called the slaying it tour they were in salt lake the following night and i don't know where they're they're going to new york and chicago and all sorts of major cities Mm -hmm. and we got to see them like almost first. Which is pretty cool. They're from Indiana. Yeah. But they started like in Montana, Kalispell or something, I think is where they were before us. And that then sounds right. They're just going to keep moving east. Right. Until yeah. Christmas. So that, but, yeah. Finally on Christmas, they can be home. <laughs> so, so yeah, they basically just tour for two months solid mm-hmm. and then they're done. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I would do that. So it was so, yeah, it was so cool to see them. It, live in person. I had never seen them before. I guess they were here last year and I missed it. Oh, bummer. So it was really cool to go, to get the t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And okay, they got a couple of brothers. There's nine. So th- there's nine dudes total. Seven are white, two are black. Uh-huh. Of course, one of the black dudes, his name is Freedom. He uh, beatboxes like crazy. Such He's a, a cool name too. Amazing. Him with the bass guy mm-hmm. in tandem are just amazing. And then the other black guy was a hoot and a holler. Yeah, he was funny. He was. He went down into the crowd and even twerked on one of the uh, in in our row, no less. Yeah, this Twer- elderly lady right on the end. <laughs> he he runs back up on stage, looks back at the lady, and says, "You down with Brown?" 
<laughs> I didn't catch that. That's funny. Oh, yeah. So he made a couple of black jokes. Like he, he was like, hey, uh, it's nice to be here in Whitaho. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wasn't he like, oh, yeah, it's nice to be one of the five black people here in Whitaho. Yeah. And there, yeah. Uh, and there, was, a, there was a black dude in the front row. <laughs> he pointed out and said, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's right. You know, and I've noticed that we've gotten a little bit more diverse, and I feel like the last eight years. Before then, nothing. <laughs> right. For me, growing up, there were the Murphys and the Fosters. Mm. I know a lot of people know uh, Lucretia and Llewellyn Murphy. He went on to become like a footballer person, mm-hmm. and then uh, Brad Foster and family. And that was about it. And now we yeah. have Grandpa from Grandpa's <laughs> Lloyd from Grandpa's Southern Barbecue. That's true. I'm glad he's in town. <laughs> me, oh, me too, because that <laughs> that food is good. So <laughs> yeah, no, I think I knew like two black kids, and they were both adopted, so their families were white. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, "Hey, it's great to be here in Idaho." You stay white, I'll be black, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be black soon, or something like yeah, that. Something yeah, something like that. He was really funny. I liked that he took it on the chin, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. He had a good sense of humor about it. Just because something is racial doesn't mean it's racist. Yeah. You know, and I think we all need to be a little more loose like that. I think so, too. And then one of the other guys thanked Aislinn Mays at Skyline Barbershop. I guess he had longer hair and just got a nice trim. And it looked good. He had a fade. And I don't know if he comped her tickets, but she was in the audience. So Uh that was super cool. That was super cool. Well, and I actually tried to do a fade on my Mexican. Oh, did you? And I did such a bad job. Oh, no. Such a bad job. I really tried. I watched a YouTube tutorial and everything, <laughs> and it was terrible. So seeing yeah. his fade, I felt a deep sense of appreciation because it looked good. It did look good. <laughs> yeah. But I just love acapella music. And in fact, I, you know, you were a drama nerd, right? In oh, yeah. uh, high school. I was a choir nerd. Not that we had, a, like we had a drama class, but it wasn't like... Official. <laughs> but but yeah. Yeah. You're one of the drama kids. Yeah. There's the debate kids and the mm-hmm. drama kids and the choir kids all sort of seem to intermingle. Right. Well, and my dad's always ran the Civic. And before my dad did, my grandpa did. So I've always gotten to see all of the plays and stuff. Like I've yeah. been fully entrenched in theater. Yeah. So I was in choir. I went to all state choir <laughs> my first time in Dork. Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> and I was when I moved to Seattle for a little bit, I was actually part of a huge barbershop, so not a quartet, but mm-hmm. whatever 50 dudes is. I guess barbershop, barbershop choir? Called the Seattle Sea Chordsmen. In fact, I still follow them on Facebook. Oh, fun! And I became a member of the SPEBSQSA, which is the... What is that, Mike? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I asked with my eyebrows, that's for sure. <laughs> it's the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. I can't believe I still remember that. (laughs) You know what? They really should have shortened that acronym down just a little. (laughs) But that's why they did it, because barbershop quartet guys and acapella guys are notorious uh, pranksters. That's true. They They like to have a little fun, as you saw. I did. And I've sort of come to the conclusion after being uh, in a musical last year that I don't think I'm a solo singer. I don't. But... Like when you're supported with a group, I was in sounds choir for a little bit. Maybe I need to get back to that. Yeah. singing's fun, but I don't have the chops to do it on my own. You did great, kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One other thing I wanted to bring up, because I'm not sure everybody knows this. Do you know the little laurel or the curly Q or the leaf or whatever? the It, it almost looks mm-hmm. like a small P. Is it the P from Paramount when it was a Paramount theater? Oh. But it's, on the, it's on the corner now of the Colonial. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I thought it was just a little flare. And if you ever think, I wonder if that thing ever lights up. It, it does mm-hmm. on the nights of performances. Yeah. So, and, and I think I kind of knew that, but as we walked out that night, I was like, oh, hey, look, it's there. Yeah, which is such a good way of doing it, too. Yeah. Because I know I've driven past it before, and it's been on, and, I, and I've been like, what am I missing? <laughs> right. You know? Right. It's yeah. like a little, uh, it's it's like the Krispy Kreme Freshly made donuts. So oh, funny. Yeah. I was going to say it's some fluorescent FOMO. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And, yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's why they do it. It's yeah, like, well, and oh, it's technically neon, but you know. <laughs> I want to be a part of the Bright Lights Big City. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks so good on, too. You know, I know that they did some uh, maintenance to it not too long ago. It looked cool. And there's another thing coming up that we'll talk about at the very end of the show, coming up at the Colonial Theater, November 18th, too. I'm so excited. Yeah. Me too. We already have our tickets. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
And then a new venue opened this week. It's for scooting your boots. You know, I might have to drag you to it, just considering my, you know, side gig. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll do some boot scooting. Well, and here's the thing. They're Need actually, to get some boots. <laughs> they're actually a secondary branch to one in Rexburg. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's the Tavern. It just opened up at 210 Cleveland Street in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. I think in the old Northgate Appliance building, but I'm not sure. We'll have to double check. We'll we'll go scoot our boots and we'll tell y'all about it. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, okay. It's a honky tonk <laughs> mocktail bar and dance hall. That actually sounds super fun, though. On Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, Mm -hmm. they do a half-hour swing dance class from 7.30 to 8. That is so fun. And then from 8 to midnight, you get to work on your... uh, Your swing. On your swinging. Because it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Thank you. And you know what? I have been thinking, I think just to, you know, sort of sell my persona... I might have to get some cowgirl boots. Really? Yeah. To be fair, I actually had some as a kid, and I loved them. Maybe it's time to... Well, and you love Jesse from Toy Story. I was obsessed. I had a (laughs) whole Jesse room. We had to get a shot of you when we went to uh, Disneyland in California Adventure Mm -hmm. next to your hero. Yeah. Yeah, with the critter sign. (laughs) And you had just started working for 96.1 and 102 on The Wolf. I had, yes. So that was like... That's true. That was a perfect promo shot for you for a minute. It was so fun. (laughs) And I, if you asked me in high school, what kind of music you, do you like? It would have been, I like everything but country and opera. And since then, <laughs> since then, I've learned to love both. That's funny. Mine would have been uh, everything but country and rap. Yeah. Funny that both of us say country. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think maybe if, if there's one genre I still am just not into, it's the uh, cookie monster death metal. It's the stuff that goes... <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then well, once that got boring, they started going, rah, 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 hey! That's and, and, fair. <laughs> and, and then screaming, too. And I'm just like, I don't get, I I guess my, ang- I guess I've worked out all my angsty mm-hmm. teenage issues. And I it just, it's, right. in fact, it's so unrelatable that it's kind of funny to me. <laughs> That's fair. You know? Now, I... I have sort of a theory around music. Yeah. This is Carly's theory of music. Okay. Carly's musical theory class. You're welcome. Anyway. Yes. I'm my taking idea, notes. <laughs> my idea is anytime you think you don't like a genre, go to a live show. Okay. Because the first time I realized I actually kind of sort of do like country, I was working the Garth Brooks Stadium Tour. And they wanted to send me away back to the house. Uh, no, it wasn't even, they wouldn't send us back there. So I would actually have time. They wanted us to like sit in a break room and not get paid. And I was like, no, Lame. if I'm going to be Wage here. <laughs> well, yeah, basically <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to be here and I can't use my time as I please, you're going to pay me for my time. Yeah. And they're like, well, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> and so they made me work on the actual show while he played. And at one point I even had to like run out and grab guitars and stuff. It was really cool. But when he started singing Friends in Low Places. Oh, yeah. And the crowd got into it. It's, was, a, it's a banger. I was it's a scoot- classic. I was scooting my boots backstage. <laughs> It was awesome, dude. And it then, was so good. <laughs> and then did he do the extra verse? Oh, I don't know. There, there's an extra verse. Is it the kiss my ass verse? I think it is. I but, think he did. Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. And It's I, been so long, I'm not totally sure, but probably. Garth was probably <laughs> the one that got me into country music. Right. Yeah, well, early and I, remember, 90s. I remember seeing my mom's albums of him. I specifically re- remember the one in the black and white shirt. You oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, why does she have this? This is gross. And then I and then I went and I did and, and then I went and I worked his show and I was like, okay, actually mom always yeah. mom's always right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that first got me into it. Um and then I heard a couple of other country concerts after that. I actually went to a John Party show uh as part of my sort of introduction to the wolf, and it was a blast and a half. And I also went to a local screamo band, well, death metal band. And I wasn't really into death metal before, but after that, I was like, all right, it's kind of (laughs) hot. It's kind of hot. Anytime you think you don't like the music, go see it live because the energy sells it, man. And I would offer a counterpoint. I don't, live music does nothing for me unless it's a band riffing on familiar music, which Mm. typically for me is jazz. When they, when they... Turn like a, th- a three-minute jazz standard song into 12 minutes of 
you know, xylophone, then keyboards, then oh, that's cool. sax, then scatting, then, you know, I mean, it just, that mm-hmm. blows my mind. And I guess that's the big appeal for like bands like the Grateful Dead and Fish, mm-hmm. you know, is they'll, they'll do a song and then they'll just like a jam session. That's cool. But otherwise, I'd, li- I'd rather listen to this. I'd rather say, hey, Siri, play blank. Right. I get that. I really got into country music four or five years ago. After a high school reunion, a buddy of mine came to stay, or, or was he staying for that? No, I think it was a fishing trip later in the summer. But we stayed up all night, and, and he, was, he was a total like edgy dude in high school. Like we, <laughs> you know, he had bangs down to his chin. We were waivers. Oh. I won't give you the adjective that they called us before the word waiver mm. as they pushed us in, into lockers for not liking Motley Crue in yeah. high school. <laughs> but uh, I think you probably know what it is. And, uh, and, and he was like, Hey dude, you want to listen to some country music? And I'm like, no. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. And, uh, so we stayed up probably till 4 a.m. Wow. Just listening because he would just, one song would lead to another, to another, to another. And mm-hmm. I got, it was quite the music education for me. Mm-hmm. You know, country music comes from, let's let's start with Hank Williams, but then I want to back it up before then. There was Robert Johnson, the guy who uh, sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads. Right, in yeah. Mississippi or Memphis or wherever that was. <laughs> Before that, Probably dude, Mississippi, there were, they do shit like that down there. <laughs> <laughs> there were Appalachian folk songs. Before that, mm-hmm. they were the folk songs in Ireland and from uh-huh. Britain and stuff. So, so that traditional, I don't know, Celtic music mm-hmm. came to America, and now we have you know Keith Urban. And I actually realized there was another country song that also got me into country, but it didn't get me as into country as Garth Brooks. When I went to visit my aunt in Connecticut, like I mentioned earlier, her husband played us a song called um, Riding with Private Malone, okay. I believe is the name. Uh, but it's basically, it's about this guy who gets a car, fixes it up, and he almost gets into a car wreck, but the ghost of the guy who owned the car before saves him. Oh. Yeah. Sounds cool. <laughs> it's really cool. But anyway, <laughs> I remember when we got back to Idaho, Tyson went to CD World and bought that CD. Wow. Yeah. Is he more of a country fan than you are? Uh, no. No, okay. he, he's not really a country guy either. He actually really likes EDM. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual yeah. high five to Tyson. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that song, for some reason... The entire time we were on that trip, we kept being like, Uncle Jay, can we listen to Private Malone again? <laughs> it just, we just dug it, dude. You know, being a kid on road trips was so fascinating to me. So I had pretty conservative parents, but my grandparents, not so much. <laughs> so they had, you know, pop music in the car on 8-track. Whoa. When I heard ABBA Super Trooper for the very first time, it blew my little mind. Oh, how that, could it not? That may have been the first cool pop song I ever heard in my entire life. So then I said, Grandpa, oh, what a great one too. can you back it up? <laughs> and he sort of, I could hear him rolling his eyes. <laughs> he backed it up. And I was just like, again, again, again. And eventually the entire car was, Mike, no. <laughs> I was the youngest in the car, <laughs> so I lost. Well, and also, can we just say, now parents have to deal with Radio Disney. <laughs> yeah. So, well, really, and, your and grandpa had shark. easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Baby right. Shark. No. Oh, no. <laughs> See, <laughs> if I ever have a kid, I swear, if someone shows them something <laughs> like Baby Shark, I will lose it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's almost like giving a kid like a noisy toy for yes. Christmas. Oh, it's When evil. you don't have to live with them. <laughs> evil. <laughs> evil. As in the fruits of the devil. <laughs> so anyway, the tavern is open. 210 Cliff Street. We'll be there. If you like to boot scoot Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We'll see you as we're scooting our boots. Well, and when we're done scooting our boots, I know exactly where we can go to recover the okay. next day. Uh, it's one of our favorite places in town. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh it's our favorite Sunday brunch spot. And we've been now, missing... Now that they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, which is so nice because we've been missing Diablos so much. That's where we used to go all the time and it was the best. And I'm so glad someone finally, someone who has the, uh, not audacity, who has the tenacity. There we go. Capacity? 
and capacity. They have the audacity, the ta- the tenacity, <laughs> and the capacity to actually fill their shoes. And that is my alma mater, Cast Iron. That's right. You <laughs> used to work there. In fact, it has sort of special meaning to us. Right. Yeah. And uh, I- I'm not going to say we never would have started this podcast mm-hmm. If cast iron hadn't existed, but maybe. I mean, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I worked as a waitress at cast iron. I moonlighted there right after my divorce to earn a little extra money because life's hard sometimes. (laughs) And I mentioned it to Mike when he reached out to be like, hey, bud, heard about what's going on. Hope you're doing okay." Because I was going through the same thing (laughs) at the time. (laughs) And I was like, oh, yeah, doing good. Working my second job at cast iron. And he's like, oh, cast iron you say they have some great steak maybe you should bring me some sometime so the cast iron's only been around for two or three years right and but they just started brunch this year which just a few weeks ago just a yeah like two months ago let's say yeah i that sounds about right to me Mm -hmm. and cast iron came along all i knew was the people who owned abracadabras bought the cellar Mm -hmm. and and it's no longer the people from abracadabras Mm -hmm. but trevor whitey Mm mm-hmm uh, and Jared, and oh, Vanya, uh-huh. one of your old co-workers. Oh, I love Vanya so much. She's my favorite. They do an amazing job. So I had- And Marin. Don't forget Marin. And Marin. We've had her a couple of times. Marin's She's fantastic. She is. Yeah. Always ask for her table if you can. Yes. Tell and her t- we sent you. And tip her fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, um, and I know the cast iron isn't for everybody. I, You know, they, they have a $100 tomahawk steak. You Worth know, it. <laughs> it's it's sort of like the Teton House in Manan, and do they have one in Blackfoot now too? Do they? I think so. No, we've never I, been to the I Teton House. I hope they House, right? hear it. We have not yet. Okay. I hope they hear this and they invite us. Or we'll just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but I'm saying what I hope. <laughs> so, <laughs> so back to Cast Iron. Um, they they just have an amazing. Everything they do is good. You can't go wrong. You really can't. Man, sometimes they do this beef stroganoff. Yeah. Oh, that just warms your soul. It's so good. So we've been a couple of times. Once I had the ahi sandwich. Oh, so good. Ahi and avocado. Ah- ahi is just the perfect protein, isn't it? Sushi grade ahi. And you only care if it's been seared oh, on yeah. the sides and that's it. Mm-hmm. So tender. And it doesn't leave a heavy feeling in your stomach like steak. Mm-hmm. But it's just fantastic. Doesn't so even, good. Doesn't taste like fish in the least bit. The other time I had something called the croque monsieur, mm-hmm. but I got the uh, poached egg on the side, which makes it a croque madame. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't understand American genders enough. I certainly don't understand French genders, but they were both fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's all French to you? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I love that. They're Greek. No. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, that's it's, the correct It's all thing. in an indecipherable language to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> none of it's American. Yeah, <laughs> Anyway, <Merca. laughs> um, Now, I like to do the Eggs Benny anytime I get brunch somewhere. Yes. Uh, it, it's kind of like you and your Italian sub anytime you go to a sandwich shop. Yes. I like to test out the Eggs Benny. And I got that one time, and then I also got their... Oh gosh, oh, what was it I had last you time? You got the frittata. Yes, which the is Caprese my frittata. Yeah, that's my second favorite <sighs> kind of tata. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it was so good. And I also got like the sourdough bread on the side with this blueberry jam that they made in house. Huckleberry, wasn't it? Huckleberry, I think yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh, it was so good. We'll throw the menu up on the screen so you can check it out and drool. Mm-hmm. But I highly recommend. My mouth is salivating. <laughs> In fact, it was so great that Sunday brunch at Cast Iron on 17th, you are IFAF this week. So Chris Pie 5, 21 finger gun pew, salute, pew. and a chef's kiss to you. <laughs> well done. And a quick suggestion, if you want to be a little naughty... Get the loaded Bloody Mary because it's like a drink and an appetizer <laughs> all in one. I can't believe there's like three different skewers. <laughs> so many. Just one shrimp. Has, yeah, shrimpies and cocktail onions and cheese. Oh, my yeah. favorite. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so good. Yeah. It's, all right. Uh, I want to talk about why capitalism is good, kids. <laughs> Let's do it. I know late stage capitalism has its problems and we've <laughs> harped on that before and maybe even hinted toward the possibility of a universal basic income someday. What a way to tee this bit up. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really interested to see where this is going to (laughs) go. Well, I'm really interested in 
The Battle of the Sled Hills. Yes. Coming soon to Idaho <laughs> Falls, Idaho. Oh, that'll be fun. And with winter right around the corner, we, yeah. you got to talk about that. So we've already talked about the Ryder Park. I think it's called the Ryder Park Sled Hill or mm-hmm. Tubing Hill. The main activity is tubing. Ryder so Park fun. is the park at the corner of Snake River and I-15 where you saw that big mound of dirt that they brought in earlier this year. They've laid the sod now. Now, for some reason... I, my brain goes into logistics mode, and I kind of mm-hmm. wonder how they laid the sod. Like, okay. did they start at the bottom and just do circles around the mountain? Or, and I think this is the more fun way, <laughs> did they take the sod and roll it down the hill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it would have been more work to, like, take it up the hill first. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but they've got, okay, but for uh, sleds and tubes and stuff, mm-hmm. they have um, not only, okay, I think for the sled hill in particular, they have a magic carpet, which is like a conveyor belt. Yeah. And I know they also have a tow rope for, because they also have an area where you can do beginner skiing and stuff. It's sponsored by a couple of people, Kelly Canyon being one of them. You know, I've never skied. Okay. Despite living here my entire life. We're now going to have a ski bunny hill right here in town. I mean, like in the heart of in central Idaho Falls. That's pretty fun. So Ryder, the Ryder Park sled hill now has saw it on it. And they even last week tested out their snow blowers, their snow makers. Mm. I think they call them guns. Whoa. Okay. I don't know if they pump the water from the river or the fishing pond or (laughs) so if you see a fish flopping up there, (laughs) (laughs) probably, you know. Got sucked out, sucked yeah. off, sucked up. Anyway. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of like filter or something. <laughs> sure, or like right, yeah. Net so they can't get stuck in there. Yeah. And I think they're going to have ski rentals and inner tube rentals. So you can just <laughs> pack everybody in the car and go. You don't have to oh, that's you know, nice. put anything on the roof. Yeah, or just dress your kid up like that kid from a Christmas a Christmas story. Exactly. Yeah. I can't just move take my him. arms. <laughs> I can't put my arms down. <laughs> get them all in the car. It is $15 per person for an hour and a half. And I did see some people on Facebook going, what? Uh, it's insane. Uh. So I don't know. Does that include the equipment? I don't think so. I think that's additional. That seems excessive. To be fair, I wouldn't want to stay out longer than an hour and a half. <laughs> the old man in me says, that's ridiculous. But um, if if I think about what's comparable to 15 bucks, an hour and a half's worth of entertainment doesn't seem too shabby. Well, but like, think of all the families that have like six kids. Right. I mean, that's a fat, that's a fat bill. Yeah, it is. To pay. It is. And I think that's why some people were complaining about it. Especially because there's, there's going to be at least one kid that's going to do it for like 15 minutes and then be done. And, and be done. And I guess, yeah, they're going to have fire pits for making s'mores and roasting marshmallows, too. Okay, that's so, kind of cute. Yeah, it, it, it seems like they've really thought it out well. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be open, as I understand it, sometime around Thanksgiving, which is perfect. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, because all the family visiting, you can take them out to do that. Exactly. That's a fun activity. So across town, up there, take that road up there about five miles toward the Bone Road. Oh. Let me say that. <laughs> So you you head east on Lincoln <laughs> toward the foothills, take a right on the Bone Road, and it's right about there somewhere. Okay, so a bit past Iona? The Idaho Falls Snow Park. It's 42 acres, by the way. Wow, okay. But they just installed a magic carpet. Oh, nice. So that you can just, you know, stick the inner tube on there and sit on it and, <laughs> and have it haul your fat ass up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to do it, really. Really, the only way to go. Especially in snow pants. Yeah. It's so hard to lift your knees up in snow pants. I remember hiking up a hill just to sled down it. Anybody remember Fire Hill by the <laughs> fire station at Skyline and Highway 20? Oh, wow. Yeah, that was... They've built buildings. It's right by Shaka's. It's right where Shaka's is now. Crazy. Okay. But that was a great hill, and I was just crestfallen (laughs) when they started building there. Mm -hmm. Think of me in the winter. Come on, guys. (laughs) Anyway, Idaho Falls Snow Park is looking pretty good, too. They're reopening in December. Oh, here's their address, 207 Bone Road. Oh, okay, cool. In Iona, but... Do you, do we know how much they cost? That's why capitalism is good, kids, is because it's great for the consumer. No, I have no idea. Well, if they're smart, 
they'll be less than 15 bucks. <laughs> right. Or it'll be 15 bucks for three hours. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. But I do I do know they definitely have more room. Mm-hmm. But Ryder, again, Ryder Park is just so conveniently and centrally located too. That's so. true. That's true. I'm sure they're both going to have their benefits. I'm excited for both of them. Yeah. We get to go sledding this year. I might have to actually get a snowsuit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I threw mine away. I haven't been skiing or boarding or anything for like six years. You know, I think I finally threw my snowboarding outfit away mm-hmm. last year. Oh, funny. Yeah. I was you like, know, this, this is so out of style. I have never once been skiing or snowboarding, which is sort of a shame because I've lived here my whole life. My jaw's on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I remember world my- World class <laughs> resort is 90 minutes- Right. Into Wyoming. Yeah. My um, elementary school had Grand Targhee days where they like kids would pay a certain amount and they all go. Elementary school kids going there. Yes, dude. Yeah. Well, and we just, first off, we couldn't really afford it. It happens. It's cool. Um, But also I was like, "Uh, being outside in the cold all day. No, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I was never that into it, but they had like snowboarding and skiing clubs in school. In my day. When I was coming up, they would just go to Kelly Canyon. <gasps> Kelly Canyon, yeah. That yeah. that was another one. I think that they'd alternate. I'm actually going boarding with a buddy. I don't know. I never went. <laughs> at Kelly when they opened this year. Really? I don't, well, yeah. I'm. Don't mess up your knee. I'm a little, exactly. I'm a little rusty mm-hmm. and I had a knee problem a couple of years ago. So I'm going to, I guess I, I st- I'll start working the legs right now. Smart. I won't skip leg day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. It'll be fun. You know, I think I might have to go snowboarding or skiing this year. Ooh, ooh. I wonder if I can find an all pink snowsuit. I want to look like Barbie. I was going to say, do yeah, do do your shopping tonight. (laughs) There we go. You know what? I'm going to Amazon that. Yeah. This sounds fun. Alcohol, (laughs) Ambien, and Amazon. (laughs) (laughs) Secret Santa surprise. (laughs) Well, that's our show. We want to leave you with something we're extremely excited about. We already have our tickets. Mm -hmm. Coming to the Colonial Theater, November 18th, Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, yeah. The cast is going to be there. So Pedro, Uncle Rico, and Mr. Napoleon Dynamite himself, John Heater, Mm -hmm. all going to be there. And they, they cut this super cute promo. We want to leave you with it. Tickets, I think, at IdahoFallsArts.org. So here's the deal. The tickets are like 50 bucks a piece, I think, or 48, something like that, mm-hmm. pretty close to 50, just to attend the screen, the 20th anniversary screening of the film. If you want to spend an additional $100 per person, you get to actually meet the cast, I'm sure get the photos, get a swag bag. Mm-hmm. I wasn't feeling that fancy when I got our tickets, but you might be, You know, depending on how much you love this movie. I wonder if I need to talk to my dad's friend. Okay. For on our behalf. See if we can just yeah. get a couple of backstage passes. Yeah. I mean, I know that we're going with a group. Uh-huh. But it could be just us. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be such jerks. We'd be like, "Okay, bye guys." <laughs> I'm good either way. I really am. I'd love to meet them. I think I told you my Napoleon Dynamite story before, right? I think so. We I know we've talked about Napoleon Dynamite. Uh we did a couple weeks ago, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Quick recap in case somehow it didn't make it in or something like that. So my grandma took Tyson and I, my brother, to uh, Napoleon Dynamite when it first came out in the theater. Oh, yes, that's right. And (laughs) she sort of billed it to us. She has a... um, Action Action movie. movie. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, it's about a guy named Napoleon Dynamite who goes on adventures (laughs) or something like that. And then we got in there and it was so cringingly Idaho. It was so good. And, you know, my dad grew up in Preston. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's near and dear to my heart because the first time I saw it, I loved it. I thought it was so good. (laughs) And if you wonder if you're listening outside of Idaho and Utah and wondering what's up with that, I mean, it really, if you grew up in Idaho, Napoleon Dynamite really hits home. Oh, yeah. I had a kid in my class who knew the entire Napoleon Dynamite dance, and he did it for a talent show one one year. Have you ever seen a little kid do it? There's some kid, I don't know if he was dressed up for Halloween, but he couldn't have been more than seven (laughs) doing the dance. That's so cute. Yeah. You know, and honestly, I've been dying to do a couple's costume of Napoleon and Pedro, Obviously, with me as Napoleon. <laughs> I could be Pedro. You could be Pedro. You've yeah. got dark hair. 
In fact, one of the things that bugs me so much Mm -hmm. in that movie is when they all call him Pedro. Oh, right. Because they pronounce it like Americans. (laughs) It's like it's like no the the Spanish e is pronounced like an a uh-huh. like jalapeno yeah it's one of those things that I get unreasonably frustrated at <laughs> all right but for Pedro <laughs> so we totally ripped this promo off of the web and I hope it's okay with J Swizz promotions or whatever um, we're just promoing it more uh, ask you're f- welcome for the free advertisement yeah <laughs> ask forgiveness later here it is. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody from Idaho Falls, Idaho. How's it going? Hey, we're going to be there Saturday, November 18th. At the Colonial Theater. It's pretty much the best venue of all time. Check up as the characters. We love you guys. Show up. Or something. See you later. Peace out. Where are you going? Where are you going?